And this we've actually cataloged already, so we know a little bit about it. And uh, as you can see, it's just a kind of a simple journal. Not the long lost Emily Dickinson journal where she no. tells us everything. <laughs> no. <laughs> But it is an interesting journal because it has a lot of writing inside of it. If I can find it. Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is it's so part parallel to like, read. <laughs> but it is hard to read. <laughs> but it's very tidy Susan Dickinson handwriting. Ah. And there's about seven pages here. Mm -hmm. Very up. carefully written. And this seems to be the same um, ink. And then at some point, um, it actually, the ink changes. Uh -huh. So maybe she wrote it at a different time uh -huh. for her pen right now. Mm -hmm. It's not very easy to read, but um, we have had um, a volunteer help us to transcribe mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And we learned that it is all about um, Susan's youngest son, Gib. And was it before or after? He passed away, do we know that? Um, at first we weren't really sure, um, but we, we think now that this was um, while he was still alive. One of the sentences talks about um, she's writing this, she's, lest her memories um, fade her, she wanted to start recording some of mm -hmm. the memories she had of him. And I think she wrote this around, at least she started it around the time that Gib was four. It does say our last baby. Our last baby. So I don't know if this was, you know, just her knowing that she wasn't going to have any more kids, so she wanted to write down yeah. all of these little... It, it does raise that memories. question, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, according to whom? According to, to who? Yeah. <laughs> according to Austin? Yeah, so Susan was 44 when Gilbert was born. Oh. And, um, um, and he, he was... So he was born August 1st, 1875, mm. and mm -hmm. died in 1883 mm -hmm. at the age of eight from mm -hmm. uh, typhoid, uh, apparently what his cause of death was after it. So he had a very sudden onset, very um, severe illness and was sick for, uh, it was less than a week and, and, mm -hmm. and died mm -hmm. very kind of precipitously mm -hmm. um, upon that illness. It just cracked the family. It did. I mean, yeah. it, it affected everyone. Mm -hmm. Dickinson writes it, where she goes across the, the path to the house and goes into the house which she hadn't visited for mm -hmm. many, many years, yeah. Yeah. and uh, became ill with the, the, the treatment that he was receiving, mm -hmm. the smell of the treatment, mm -hmm. vomited. Dis disinfectants. Disinfectants, and, and just, yeah, 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 buckets of dis disinfectant. Right. Just mm -hmm. really a dramatic and wrenching. Yeah. Yeah. So she... Um, she collapsed or fell ill herself, uh -huh, par uh -huh. partly, probably, partly at least because of uh, the um, just emotional, the tragic trauma, emotional the situation. trauma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she had to be taken back across the path to the homestead, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, she, you know, she died two and a half years later, but yeah. and never, never yeah. really yeah. recovered her yeah. full, her full strength, her full yeah. health after after this. Yeah. Oh, this is very, so, some, sometimes Susan's writing is just wonderful. So here, um, a cool, clear, magnificent morning, just, uh, just that day on which to be born. <laughs> At noon, mm -hmm. choir of the village church oh my. was singing. It was right across the street. Yeah, yeah. right. The missionary, the missionary chant. chant. Right, yeah. Oh, my goodness. And I could hear the, the mm -hmm. rich, full note as they mm. no, as as they were born in on the sweet summer air ah, through uh, through the open doors and windows mm. we, well you read that a bit that she wrote for Dickinson that appears in the Springfield Republic that is a stunning piece of writing it is yeah. it's a stunning piece of writing so it is not surprising you know, that you find other evidence of how skilled she was with words, something that drew mm -hmm. the two women together. Yeah, yeah. appreciation, yeah. obviously a talent for it as well. Mm -hmm. But this, it also, um, you know, this is brand new stuff. Dickinson scholars have not seen this yeah. before. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, when you think that somebody who was born, you know, so long ago that we know everything about them, no. <laughs> If you look at the larger context, this is something brand new. And who knows, once it gets transcribed, 
And it's one of the most be. intimate pieces that we have in the collection. Yeah. I mean, this is a mother writing about her young child and mm -hmm. then he soon dies. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of amazing to have this type of look into the yeah. Dickinson's life. Yeah. Well, in addition to Susan's writing, uh, further in the journal, we have oh some my, additional oh writing. Gosh. And uh, it appears, this is also Sue's handwriting up here on the paper, but there's also another piece of paper <laughs> that's um, pasted inside. And it's what we think is in Gid's handwriting. Yeah, and dear mom, I don't want to come. Down in the rain, this, this noon, noon, please send Papa's and my lunch up. Send all you can. That is the <laughs> cutest thing in the world. <laughs> yeah. He was too busy playing, and he didn't want to come down for lunch. A little demanding. <laughs> This is a great travel trunk. Oh my. Stickers from all, all over, over the place. place. Many United States lines. <sighs> Cabin. Yeah, she in different hotels. Yeah. Oh my. See, suitcases have gone downhill. It's all about the stickers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Oh, here's one that says transatlantic. I think Montreal. Yeah, transatlantic. Oh, yeah. yeah. French line. Uh huh. Okay, so. Italia. Florence. Yeah. yeah. Lots of um, steamers back and forth mm. across the Atlantic. Martha Dick. This is Bianchi. Dickinson Bianchi. Oh, boy. Uh, I can't. Uh, final destination looks like Paris. Mm. She was in cabin 538. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of information yes. there. Yeah, uh -huh. lots of travels. And Martha traveled to Europe extensively. We have a lot of uh -huh. um, programs from the theater mm -hmm. shows that she went to in Europe. We have um, a lot of the menus from some mm. of these ships, actually. So we have a lot of mm. uh, paper material related to Martha's travels abroad. Yeah, we even have um, hotel bills oh, and uh, telegrams and letters uh -huh. making arrangements for where, where they were going to stay. And this is post Austin's death. Yeah, I this was, <laughs> This is uh, probably beginning in the 1920s. Yeah. Do you guys want to see inside? Um, well, <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay. okay. You're so teasing we. Teasing us? Yeah, I'm teasing you guys. Um, <laughs> the big so, reveal. Yeah, we have not gone through this box oh, before. Oh, look at the hat. Oh, Just all these out. So we have this lovely straw hat. Oh. Look at the condition of it, though. It's bright gold. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's really beautiful. Yeah. Wow. We have another fun. Little hat it's here. What so are those called? Cloche. Cloche. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a photograph of Martha in her later years. Oh, we have all sorts of fun oh, things. My. We have a <laughs> fun pin oh. cushion with some hat pins. Oh, yeah. Can't travel with that now. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. This is a great little case that says uh, MGD for Martha Gilbert Dickinson, Dickinson. Mm -hmm. which is her pre married name. Mm. So that's before a, uh, 1903. Little shoehorn. Shoehorn. Which is very ornate, but also short. Seems mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's lovely. God, that's beautiful. Beautiful brush. And that has, oh. looks like it has the name on it as that well. That also has MGD. Oh, so looks this like is a set. set. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. A travel yeah. set. There. And there's another one in here. It says EADs for Edward Austin Dickinson, which would be Ned. Yeah. Mm, um, yeah. Which is much simpler. He went to Europe just just once. It was the, the year or so before he died. Mm. Um, and it was this trip that Susan and Martha and um, Ned um, had planned, and they were really looking forward to it, uh, but didn't take the trip until a after Austin's death. Mm. So. Mm. This is interesting because like I have suitcases at home and when I go travel, a lot of the stuff that I take that's for travel, I just kind of leave it in there and then just put the suitcase away. And then I opened it and ended up finding them like toiletries and stuff like that. So I wonder if that's what this was. Mm. It was just mm -hmm. the travel box. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. possibly. And you didn't really yeah. take it out for anything else. Yeah. Box. <laughs> so 
with oh these my. name cards. Yeah. Madame Martha Dickinson Bianchi, and it has the Evergreens oh. listed on there, yeah. so these look like her, just her name cards. Calling cards. Calling cards. Calling cards. Yeah. Card. And Madame. These. She did like that. And it is a full box of them, mm. so she was... Ready for networking and for socializing networking. and <laughs> for introductions. Ready to go. There's nothing on the back. Nothing on the back. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's just plain. And it's interesting that it just says the Evergreens. It doesn't even say the Evergreens Amherst. Right. It's just because one should well, know. One well, should there's know. only one Evergreens. <laughs> yeah. Let's see, how's a little book here? Is that a prayer book or a hymnal? Oh, and something inside. Manual Catholic, Catholic Devotions. Devotions. The oh, West Pocket right. Manual. So there are some um, notations throughout the book. Mm. And there's also, so this is a little uh, bookmark that was torn out of, or cut out of something. And it says January 28th, 1940. Yeah. Um, there's uh -huh. some notations around different verses that say, that said, you know, St. Mary's. and so dog ear ears. pages yeah. of so certain things. When yeah. she went to different churches, maybe she, yeah. whatever she learned about at that mm -hmm. particular service. Mm -hmm. and so you remember also that um, the uh, stairway at the Evergreens is lined with these big, large format right. photographs of right. European cathedrals. So there's mm -hmm. this, uh, there is a real fascination she mm -hmm. has for, mm -hmm. for all of that. Mm -hmm. Now this tiny little Looks oh. like a travel frame. It folds flat, but there is a little easel backing. A black and white photograph of a woman, unknown. Doesn't. But a, a fun mystery. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and then there's a few paper pieces in here, and it's additional uh, travel travel tags. Yeah. And these are say M D Bianchi, M D mm. Bianchi, M D Bianchi. Um, and it would be really fascinating to match up some of these dates and ships that. Mm -hmm. are identified on here mm -hmm. with some of the other paper material we have and we could actually track Martha's travels. You know, of course, we're all Dickinson people, so we think of these finds in terms of Dickinson, but just these random objects, I mean, they're so evocative. I, I, I can see uh, many, many different ways that these objects might be used 20 years from now, 50 years from now. Mm -hmm. and they're, mm -hmm. It's just so rare, such a rare glimpse into a world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, ultimately, of course, with collections management, these objects will need to be stored kind of separately. So stored separately, mm -hmm. but how wonderful that we can see them, reassemble them, mm -hmm. we're see, left yeah, mm -hmm. see what their associations. So this, we're here, this is a fantastic object from the, from the Evergreens. Um, you know, I remember when I first started working there now almost 22 years ago, this was, this just always caught my eye. So I remember it was against the west wall in the dining room. And, um, you know, that's just such a, that's just such an ornate room in a sense mm -hmm. anyway, because of the ceiling. And this just really popped. Um, so as I, as I understood it from uh, people who had worked there before, it's, um, it's an Italian cassone. Sometimes they were, I think they were uh, known as wedding chests mm -hmm. that um, uh, was a, a kind of a fashionable thing to have uh, to bring to a marriage. Um, usually uh, 15th, 16th century is probably about the time that these were um, these were in style and fashion. Um, but it's just, you know, the front is just so ornate, just this wonderful carvings of, uh, with a, a kind of a hunting scene in the mm. center, and then uh, uh, sort of uh, male, female figures on the, as the, the columns on the ends. Um, it's just really, really beautiful. I remember hearing about this mysterious locked trunk, I always heard. This is hardly a trunk. I mean, this is yeah, a little bigger. It's a little bigger. <laughs> like what? Do you say furniture it's, it's, at that point? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, should we open it? Well, Maybe we should moment of it. truth. <laughs> yeah, okay. moment of truth. Okay. Well, I'll be. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Well, 
there's uh there's not a lot but there's it's, not a lot <laughs> what there is there's that's really neat it's like News fake flowers newspapers, newspapers. Mm -hmm. so i think now thinking back on this i believe there was i think this was full of copper vessels like pictures and chargers things like that um i think <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Oh, you weren't dreaming. Copper and rod stole belonged on library mantelpiece. mantelpiece. And that is in Mary Hampson's handwriting. Yep. Copper and... You were right, Jane. Red it was copper. Were, well, okay. Weren't so, misremembering. So this is so funny. Mary Hampson put these little notes around yeah. in boxes mm -hmm. and... You know things that she stored that she thought somebody somebody ought to know. Well, Mary Hampson's continual curating of everything is quite a story. I mean, careful, not entirely complete. I mean, but careful, yeah. but careful, and again, thinking ahead. She knew that that, that would be important information yeah. for someone to know in the right. future, and right. that's been incredibly right. helpful during this process of going through everything. Is yeah. finding her notes along the way so that we yeah. have some context to mm -hmm. add to the record. Well, there are not stacks of Dickinson poems here. That's okay. But she's a bit elusive, isn't she? Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, I know. They're just not turning up where you want them to. Um, so I moved to Amherst six months ago, not even six months ago, when I moved here to be closer to Emily Dickinson. And I don't think I realized when I moved here um, that I would find myself finding more in common, not just with Emily, but with her family. When we went through that travel trunk, I saw a lot of items that mimic items that I have today, the brushes and the stickers. And I collect vintage suitcases and put those stickers on them. And just to see that that was exactly what Martha Dickinson did. That's exactly what she liked. She took pride in that travel and she took pride in all those places and to keep the pictures and the tags and, you know, hoarding luggage tags. And we still do that today. And it's interesting to see all of that and to know more about that picture. And it just, the little things that we find, I think made me feel more excited about this project and everything the museum is doing than the bigger stuff. You know, I came to Amherst over 40 years ago to study Emily Dickinson at the University of Massachusetts. And I came thinking that so many of the mysteries were knowable, that you could find out if you just did enough research who the master was, that you could, you could find out why Dickinson didn't publish, all the many, many mysteries that we have about Emily Dickinson. And I think today I was reminded when we opened this trunk um, about the unknowable. You know, we, we wanted to find something in this mysterious trunk, this mysterious piece of furniture that I've heard about for, for a while now um, that would kind of solve Dickinson. And I like the fact that it didn't. <laughs> I, I like the fact that there are still so many mysteries that are out there that are not knowable. You know, it says something about the capacity of human knowledge, that there will always be some things that we won't be able to fully fathom. And, and particularly for Dickinson, I like its resistance. You know, that there's no is the wildest word in the language, Dickinson said. And I like the fact that today she kind of said that to us again.